Okay. Are you recording already? Yes, already recorded. Wonderful. All right. So it's uh, our last interview today. Today is December 4th, 2015, and we are at Satnam Yogurt's Healing Circle uh, Health Fair. And please introduce yourself. Hi, my name is Laura Gonzalez, and uh, I'm a teratologist. I'm a tarot reader, and I also do a whole lot of things. I don't know if you want to hear a whole lot of my <laughs> bio. Yes, yes. Um, I'm also... Um, I'm part of the Center of the Elemental Spirit, that is a congregational Wiccan community here in Chicago. And I also have my private practice as a tarot reader, and I am also, what I joke about all the time, I'm a witch for hire. I do a whole witch lot of, I do a whole lot of uh, healing, different techniques and prayers, you know, and that's, that's what I do. I'm also a mentor, I teach uh, tarot and I teach practical magic and, I teach people how to bring magic into their lives to make a better version of themselves. Wonderful. Do you want to publish uh, your contact information, like telephone or email, which you, which people can find you? Sure. Uh, you can find me at www.bruja. That's B as in boy, R U J A, uh, LauraGonzalez.com, and then from there you can find my whole contact information, telephone, and everything. Wonderful. So. Tell me a little bit about how do you come to this point? What was your process of awakening? Um, I was very, very young when I started reading on um, perception, uh, extrasensorial perception, and uh, the realm of the occult, what people call the occult. Um, I was probably 15 or 16 years old when I started playing with uh, cards. Um, oracular cards and then about seven years ago I started reading tarot and I just love it. I have however been aware of a psychic ability since I was very very young. I have a lot of coincidences happening in my life. Quite often I will think of somebody and they will call on the phone or I will think of somebody and they will walk into the door uh, stuff like that, that for most people, you know, it's a coincidence that happens, say, once a month. Well, I will have those instances happening almost daily, you know, and I noticed that that was different, that that put me in a different category from the general population, if you will. Um, and I noticed that at a very, very young age, uh, 10, 9 years old, you know, that's when I started noticing all those coincidences happening. And when I was probably 16 or 17, I started having very vivid visions of mm -hmm. things that will happen in the future. Um, and it will be when I was in a very relaxed state of mind. And this vision was like, they were like a whole movie happening on my head. And the more bizarre that they seemed, it seems to me that the more real and accurate they, they will be. So first that was kind of scary, uh, especially I grew up in Mexico City and Mexicans are mostly Catholic. So when you see this type of uh, quote unquote divination from a Catholic perspective, it could be kind of scary. Um, it was about the same time that I discovered that my path was not uh, Catholicism, but I was rather more a pagan. Mm -hmm. So I started calling myself a pagan when I was 16 years old, 17 years old. Um, mostly as a teenager to get reaction from people, you know. But then I, I knew that that was my path, you know, paganism, God, goddess, the divine, and nature, and the spirits of nature coming from also uh, my whole land from the uh, native peoples of, you know, the Mexica uh, traditions, there is a lot of uh, philosophy about being one with nature and being close to nature and being respectful of the spirits of nature. So all that awareness was very, very strong on my late teen years. Um, but at the same time, I started playing with, with the cards and 
those heavy visions of divination and, and um, what was going to happen in the future, the visions were gone because now I had a more tangible tool mm -hmm. to come up with the divination, if you will. Um, currently, I tell people when I read for them, I don't think I can tell them the, their future because we are, every step we take, we are changing and we are modifying our future. Mm -hmm. What I believe that we do on a tarot reading, the way I read, which is a therapeutic tarot readings, I believe we tap into tendencies that they are projecting. Mm -hmm. And I believe that a reading gives them the ability to decide if they wanna go into that realm, if they wanna go into that tendency, or if they wanna actually change something and benefit from the information that they're getting. Um, I enjoyed quite a lot what I do. I believe um, is the perfect outlet for my ability and my capacity of, of foreseeing. And, um, and I enjoy it quite, quite a lot. I, I love doing readings and I love being here. And then everybody here is wonderful and the environment is just so beautiful you know everybody comes with a good heart and i really enjoy what i do tell me about this place and this um crowd what what are these people and how do they end up here how do they end up here well i guess most of them uh i believe they come here to do yoga and then they are and the the first friday uh community healings are announced and so people just come as they will and they walk back and forth and they go with the different healers there's a big connection with people and as you know there are different healers here there are people doing Reiki and energy work and massages and there's another uh, usually there's two more people doing oracle readings and they're all fantastic and uh, we come together this is probably I'm very new to to this uh, location this is probably my fourth or fifth first Friday here at Satnam Yoga um, and I love it. I think people are very open. I think the environment is very safe. Um, quite often, let me tell you about my readings, quite often I find that what I do touches on people's uh, deep emotions. And, you know, when you are seeing uh, within your emotions, chances are you are going to get emotional. And sometimes those rivers just flow. And it is great to know that we are in a very safe environment and that people can actually release those emotions and let them go and through it go through their healing, their healing process. And the fact that are, they are able to do that while a million other things are happening here says a lot about the environment and it says a lot about how people, and I'm very thankful, uh, how people trust me to um, help them tap into those emotions. Uh, what is your favorite color, if you can share that? Uh, can you tell? It's blue. <laughs> and what's, uh, do you, can you share your zodiac sign? Do I what? Zodiac sign. Zodiac. I'm a zodiac sign. I'm a cancer. Uh -huh, uh -huh. I'm a cancer. So yeah, I'm cancer is emotional, right? <laughs> we're very emotional. We're very emotional. Um, I believe that one of my biggest cancer trait which is probably not very friendly to say, but I'm gonna say it. We are extremely patient. I think like that the animal, like the, like the crab, we have a very hard core. So I've, I'm 42 years old, so I've seen this throughout my life. I'm very patient with people. I'm, I'm usually, you know, people can throw stuff at me and I'll be like, it's okay, it's okay, you know, like I'm very, very patient. But then what happened is like the crab, the little pincers come out and we reach a point that you can go back anymore and then we just we just cut and i know it sounds very dramatic but chances are if you push a cancer person to their limit you will never see him again you know we are kind of like that we we just like cut and go but it takes a lot for me to get there so <laughs> don't don't be frightened i have a cancer in my family so right on right <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I know i know so, can you tell me a little bit about how do you combine this rebellious nature of going pagan and, and all of that with business, with the finances, business and uh, practice? 
practice. Okay, I um, I don't believe that there is a separation between your spiritual path and then what you do in life. But that's me. Not everybody is going to live their life through my perspective. That being said, um, I'm a pagan. I believe in nature. I believe that nature is abundant and that there is no lack of anything. We live in a society that has fed us this idea of lacking and the need for money and consumerism and buy this, buy that. Buy stuff so you will be happy. And I believe that the product that they're selling us is the idea of buying things. Um, I believe once we come into an awareness of how the world is such an abundance and uh, you just asked me to do an interview and the first thing you say is you can talk about your business. That's abundance right there, mm -hmm. you know. Um, once you're open and you are with the flow of nature and earth and God and goddess and that abundance that comes from them, the flow just takes you and it takes you to the realm of abundance and prosperity, you know. Um, so how do I combine that with my business? Well, I've educated myself very well before I started my tarot business. And there was an article by, her name escapes me, but her light, last name is Barrett. It's a very well-known pagan person that lives in California, I believe. And she wrote an article about abundance and prosperity on the pagan community. And she said, the wise women of the past, you know, those women who were the midwives and the dead wives, the dead midwives, and um, the people who were the um, advisors for the community, uh, those people, that's all they did. And the community will take care of them. So say if I was the midwife or if I was the wise woman that talk about weather or healing or healing with herbs or whatever, the community usually will pay those people by taking care of them. So they will tend to their gardens, they will turn to their grounds, they will give them food, they will give them an animal. They would always be in an exchange of energy between those people of the past, the, the healers and the, the people, the, the town, if you will. Well, since money was invented, that exchange of energy has changed. And we have put value on those pieces of paper and the coins, right? And we say, you give me a good, and I give you these coins and this paper. The exchange of energy is the same. So I believe that in modern times, we as urban pagans, or my, myself as an urban pagan, uh, we come with the times, you know, and I think that a fair exchange of energy is just that. If, I, if you sit with me for 20 minutes and you want to have a reading and we are tapping into your deep subconsciousness and we're helping you heal things from your past, things that you cannot move on in your life if you don't cleanse that part of yourself, well, the fair exchange of energy is that you pay me. Unfortunately, I don't cook, and I, don't, I wouldn't know how to kill a chicken, and we live in 2015, so you don't pay me with a chicken anymore, or you cannot tend to my garden because I simply have no garden. But the fair exchange of energy is I give you that service, now you give me money. It's just it, you know, it's just a fair exchange of energy. Uh, I believe there's a lot of stigmatization when it comes down to people like us who do this type of work, um, especially, I might tell you, on the Latin American and Spanish community, they say, uh, if you are the real deal, you wouldn't charge money. And I think that, that is, that's some balance, you know, that is not fair. I think that a fair exchange is it, a fair exchange. So I, I never had a problem with charging for my services because this is what I do. I'm a full-time witch, <laughs> you know. So when uh, you saw the visions of the future and then that future happened, do you think it was a clairvoyance when you really tapped into the future or you created that future? 
Excellent question. I do not believe I will have the capacity to create the future for others. I believe each one of us has the capacity to create our own future, that we create it step by step in every decision that we make. Do I look to the left? Do I look to the right? Do I hire this person? Do I hire the other? Every little decision that we make shapes our future. I believe that when I foresee things, especially when I was very, very young and I could see everything, it was amazing. The visions were just amazing. Um, I believe, I often um, use the metaphor of a movie, the very thing we're doing right now. Think about you see the previews of a movie. And then you see the previews of a movie time and time again on the TV. Then you go to the movie theater, and those very previews you saw on your TV are not on the final cut of the movie. I believe it's kind of like that. I believe we see the previews, we decide we didn't like that scene, that actor, that actress, the plot of the movie. We decide we don't like that, so we cut it. Mm -hmm. And then we become actor, producer, director of our own movie. So that's my concept. I don't believe it will be too much to believe that I create that. I do believe we have a very big responsibility on telling people what we see. Um, I've trained a lot on what I do and I've learned very well to remove my own advice or my own ideas or my own concepts of many things to move that away and not let my ego speak but to be true to the meaning of the cards and to be true to uh, tapping into my psychic ability and tell people know what I think they need to hear but what is shown on the cards I also cannot tell people what I believe is the best course of action because that's not my life, that's their life. Being true to the meaning of the cards and to all the archetypes and all the symbols that are on the cards, that's, in my opinion, a reading. That's what I have to do. When people come with us alternative healers, oftentimes they're desperate. They have already seek healing on other more modern traditional medicine um, and in my case because I not only do healing readings on this type of environment but I read on many different venues and type of environments um, people hang up to what we say to every word that we say so we have a very big responsibility on how we express to those people what we're seeing on the cards um, so it's a big responsibility, you know, one has to be very careful on what one is telling people. So, how to become more successful? Can you uh, ma use your magic to become more successful in your life? And can you teach others how to become more successful? And can you help others to become more successful in every possible way? In uh, romantic life, in financial life, in health and so on? Absolutely. I believe that the magic is within every single one of us. Um, I believe that uh, these abilities are like the ability of singing. Most of us, unless we were born without vocal cords, most of us can talk, right? Most of us can sing. Not all of us are going to sing like, say, Adele or Beyonce, right? They have a special talent and ability. I believe uh, most of us have somehow a psychic ability or um, an ability to change our environment at will. And if, we, if you look at the definition of magic, one of the definitions, I, very, I believe it was Doreen Valiente, a writer from way back when, who said ma the definition of magic is changing your environment at will. 
And I believe we all have the ability to change our environment and to be successful. Now, the concept of success is different from person to person. I believe I'm very successful. <laughs> you know, I'm very happy with what I do. I love helping people. I consider myself very successful. Do I have a million dollars in the bank? I don't. Could I do magic to obtain a million dollars? Absolutely. Do I need a million dollars? No, I don't. So say I do a spell, I get a million dollars, God or God is forbid, I get sick, then it all gonna go to the insurance. Because I didn't need it a million dollars to begin with. So the, the, the saying of be careful what you wish for comes very alive when you do magic. Um, so what do you want from magic? What is your concept of success? Is it money or is it living well? Is it being okay? Is it being happy? You know? And yes, magic could be utilized for many, many different things. Do you want to find love? Absolutely. I can help you with that. Am I going to put a spell on a person that you like? Absolutely not. <laughs> so, um, in our culture, the Latino culture, there are a lot of people who are magical beings, who work with magic, and who promote themselves of, I bring you the lover that you want, on their knees, begging for your love, I can make you rich, I can... I mean, they go to extremes, you know, to disappear people from your life. Be careful what you wish for again. I don't do that. I don't work magic for a third party. Say, uh, Johnny is looking for love because Johnny has been single for a long time and they want to have a partner, right? So Johnny comes and tells me, hey, Laura, can you help me? Absolutely. First of all, we're going to do a tarot reading. Okay, Johnny, what's, what's going on? How come you don't have a partner, right? How come you haven't found happiness? Um, then we talk to Johnny about what we saw in the reading. A, maybe you will benefit from being more A or more B or more C. Then we design a spell. What's a spell? It's just prayer with props. We design a spell for Johnny to work on their self. Then Johnny is working magic with the universe, the powers that be, God, goddess, nature, Buddha, Allah, whatever you believe the higher power is. Um, and then Johnny tells the universe, I'm ready for love. Chances are Johnny is going to be walking around with a big uh, red pumping heart pulsating above their head and the possible pull of partners are going to spot that and then Johnny is going to find love but it all begins with self and the magic that I do and the spells that I do are all for self help I don't work to do spells, prayer, magic whatever you call it on third parties because I believe it is highly unethical Thank you. Thank Makes you. a lot of sense. Um, what are your favorite higher forces? Can you name like favorite angels, favorite um, higher forces? Higher forces. Um, oh my God. <laughs> Uh, first of all, I, I practice Wicca, so for most Wiccans and for most pagans, not all of us though, you cannot generalize. Um, the divine, the deities are nature, so it would be the earth, obviously. She's gone by many, many names. Most people know her as Gaia. Um, in the Mexica tradition, some people refer to the essence of the earth as Cuatlicue. Quatlique. Um So she has had many names. Um, Mother Earth, uh, Mother Goddess, the Goddess, the Moon, 
the moon has received many, many names throughout the years. She's been called uh, Diana. She's been called, uh, oh my God, Selene. She's been called many, many names. Uh, names escape me right now, of course. And then the sun. Um, I believe the sun is God. I believe that without the sun, there will be no life. So again, I follow a very spiritual path of nature. And I believe God and goddess are the sun and the moon. And then throughout the many, many years of existence of the human, human has given God and goddess different names. My favorite ones, um, all the natural essences of the Mexica Pantheon, uh, the names are, are very tricky. I'm not going to ask you to repeat them. Cuatlicue, Quetzalcoatl, Mictlan Siwat, Mictlan Tecutli, Mictecasiwat, Tzontemoc, Ejecatl, I don't know, Quetzalcoatl. They're, they're different essences, they're essences of life and death, Ometeot, obviously, life. Uh, they're essences of um, life, death, rebirth, um, the vibration of the earth, the wind and communication, intellect. Those are my major. I'm, I'm, I'm very related to um, deities or essences that are about air and thoughts and intellect because of what I do, you know, uh, communication through tarot. I have an internet radio show also, and I wrote on magazines. I, I'm, I'm a lot into the media, so it's a lot of communication. And last but not least, uh, a couple of deities that very recently entered my life, uh, recent as five years ago, uh, Mercury, the god of communication, and Fortuna, the goddess of fortune, good fortune, good and bad fortunes. She, she could be ambivalent, you know. Um, so those will be my major names that I will identify with. Um, sometimes other deities or other forms of the divine make themselves present on my readings. And I have learned that they are not present there for me, but they are present there to leave a message for the person. So I don't work with angels at all. I'm not familiar, but I have had Michael and Gabriel standing behind the person that I'm reading for and they're like hi so I let the person know hey do you work with angels because I believe it's Gabriel or I believe it's Michael those are the two that the names just come to me yeah, Gabriel and Michael showed up to ga today already in, in somebody else's interview oh my goodness so they're probably obviously around um, there are other uh, deities, names of gods and goddesses that I'm familiar with on the pagan, pagan culture and pagan lore. And one of them is goddess Hecate. And she's a goddess of, very well known as the goddess of the crossroads. And uh, a lot of people consider her the goddess of the witches. Um, I don't particularly work with her at all. However, she's come to my reading some various ways. Uh, particularly when I'm reading to people who are their devotees, you know. And it is really amazing because she usually manifests herself with dogs or horses. I think your battery's dying. <laughs> I don't know, something happened with the camera. Anyway. Uh, working so far. Okay, if we, if we stop then um, we, are, we are good, but we will continue for now. Okay, um, so sometimes it's like the dogs come around or uh, black horses, you know, that I just see on the corner of my eye. And, and then I ask, ask the person, are you a Hecate devotee? And they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. She says hi, <laughs> you know, because they're just... Um, see, when I was very young, the visions were like a movie. They were really, really vivid. Now that I do it through tarot, I don't see the visions that clearly. It's not like a movie anymore, but there are glimpses. There are in my imagination, and sometimes there are just shadows that very quickly pass by. 
Uh, when I tell you earlier that I see the, the angels, archangels, right? Michael and, and Gabriel. I don't see them with these eyes. I feel that energy. I, 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 it's hard to explain, but there's like something standing right there behind the person. And then the best thing is when they ask me, what's their name? Like the person will, I will tell the person, I think there's an angel here. And then they say, what's the name? And I just say a name, the first name that comes to my head. Because I don't know them, and I don't know all the names, but chances are the name I am saying is the name of the presence that is there. So it's pretty cool. I really love what I do. I think it's, it's amazing and, and magical. And I believe that anybody that has the ability to do it should pursue it and should do it and should educate themselves and, and do it, you know. Have you ever seen aliens? When I was very, very young, I saw uh, what we call a flying saucer. I don't think I have ever seen an alien, but I've seen the ships the flying saucers, whatever they call. I remember seeing one. Mexico is very well known for a lot of activity. There's a lot of activity happening in Mexico. So I haven't seen many firsthand. I've seen many in videos. I've seen one when I was very young. Not the beans on the saucer, but I've seen the saucer. Okay, let me use your... Um divination ability our community has mm, uh, a challenge a challenge uh, we are into aliens and we want our, yeah. them to take us to visit their ships we really want to visit their ships okay. and the aliens we know they're real we know they w want to take us okay. but every time they promise it's like two and a half years something happens we either go there and we don't remember or something happens to their technology and we don't go there okay do you have any advice to us? How to make it happen for real? Okay. Um, this is more than my psychic ability. Is my theory about aliens, if I may. I believe aliens... You're probably going to hate me for saying this. I believe aliens is us on the future. I don't think anybody has come up with that theory, and this is a theory I've come up with since I was a child. Mm -hmm. I believe it's us in the future. I believe in evolution, and I believe that we eventually are hurting Gaia so much that we will have to evolve, and we will have to move to a different planet. So those aliens, I don't think they come from a different planet, per se. I think they come from the future. Maybe we are able to save the Earth and we don't have to go in the future. And maybe that's why we never actually make contact because we actually were able to save the Earth. Obviously, that's the theory that I like because I love this Earth so much. Mm -hmm. uh, now, if I were to believe that they are really beings that are completely different genetically from us and that they are from another planet, um, I believe it happens the same as it happens with people who have died and they go to a different realm. It is believed on my line of work and my spirituality, my spiritual path, it is believed that you won't see your family and friends when they go to the other realm because you are very emotionally attached to them. It is believed that when your emotional attachment and your pain eases, then you're able to perceive them. Applying that concept, we're probably too eager to be mm. safe. And they're probably not here to, they're probably not coming to save us. They're probably just coming to say, hey, what's up? Mm -hmm. We exist, we're here, we're on another planet. Um, but we have this eagerness to be saved by them. That, that's why they probably, every time they're like, mm, no, you're not ready. Make peace, take care of your own planet, take care of yourself. Um, how are you going to welcome us? You are not mature enough. 
And right now I'm just talking, right now I'm just saying what comes to my mind. Maybe we're just not mature enough to be friends with them. Maybe we, are, we, we keep thinking we need mom and dad alien to save us. And we probably don't need them to save us. They probably just want to come and say hi. And maybe when we realize that we're the only ones that can save ourselves, maybe they will be like, oh, you finally get it. So now you're ready. Now I'm going to come and say hi. Wonderful. Awesome. That's a good final <laughs> answer. Thank you very much. Uh, much gratitude. Uh, it was wonderful to meet you and to unite it with you in this wonderful way of uh, sharing. Uh, thank you for sharing and uh, I wish you a wonderful, beautiful journey. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me and thank you for helping me promote my business. Remember to find me www.brujalauragonzalez.com. Perfect. Thank you.